let's now get into some details that you can change about your widgets navigation. So the first one is that you can change the first button that the navigation will go to. So in order to change that, I'm going to override get initial focus component. And I'm going to change the button that is being focused on. By default, it's always the first one in the hierarchy. So in this case, option one. But let's say I want it to be option three. In this case, I'm going to override this function and I'm going to pass the last UINF component into the return node. And if I now play, you can see that navigation goes to option three by default instead of one. Another important thing to understand is the navigation modes. So by default, when you play, the button states will change and that will be the only visual indication of navigation, but you can add a few other ones. So if I go to my UINF component class and then go to the class defaults, I can set use text color to true. And when this is done, when the UINF component is not being navigated upon, the text will become the default color, which is blue. And when it becomes navigated, it will change to the navigated color, which is green. So if I play, you can see that option three turns green and options two and one turn blue. And as I navigate them, the color changes. There is another navigation mode, which is using a selector. So I'm going to create that right now. I'm going to create a new user widget. I'm going to call it W my selector. And a selector is just a normal user widget. It can have whatever you want inside it. In this case, I'm going to add an image and the image is going to be some sort of target. And now I'm going to add it to my widget. And I'm going to call it the selector, just like this so that the plugin can pick up on it and use it as a selector. And now I'm also going to go to the UI Nav widgets class defaults. And in the UI navigation selector section, you'll see a few properties here. The first one is a move curve, which you can use to smoothen out the transition and the movement of the selector. I'm going to leave that null for now. You can also set the positioning relative to the button that it's being navigated to. So by default, it will snap to the center, but I actually want it to snap to the left. And you can also select an offset. So I'm going to add an offset of minus 50 in the X axis. And now we can play and see what will happen. So the selector will snap to option three and it will change to the positions of the other buttons as you navigate to them. There is yet another navigation mode that you can use, which is the animations. In order to, for that to work, you need to go to your UINF component. You need to go to the animations tab and you need to create a new animation, which must be called component animation, just like this. In this case, I'm going to offset the text a little bit. And I also have to make sure that in my UINF components class defaults, the use component animation property is set to true, which it is by default. So now if I press play, you can see that an animation is played whenever I navigate to and from 
a UINF component. Notice that the animation is automatically reversed, so you only need to play it in one direction or create it in one direction, and then the plugin will automatically reverse it. Another thing that you might have noticed is that by default, the plugin will force navigation to a button even if you're not hovering it with a mouse, which is not a behavior that happens in every game. But you can switch that off by going to your project settings. And in the plugins category, you should find the UI navigation category. And you can set force navigation to false. And as you can see, when I press play, no option is currently selected. And if I navigate to one, it will be navigated to and the visuals will show. And if I unhover, it will go back to being unnavigated. But if I try to navigate with the keyboard or with the gamepad, navigation will be restored. Another thing that you can change are the navigation inputs themselves. If you go to the plugins content folder and inside the input folder, you will see the IC UI nav input context. And this has all the input actions that the plugin uses and their corresponding keys. And you can change them to whatever values you want. There is also one way that you can navigate the widget, which is by using the gamepad's left thumbstick as the mouse. And you have two ways of doing that. You can activate that on a per widget basis by going to your UINAV widgets class defaults and setting the use left thumbstick as mouse to true. Or you can set it directly in your player controller's UINAV PC. And this will be activated across all widgets as long as it's true. So I'm gonna set it to true here. I currently have the gamepad connected. And if I move the left thumbstick, you can see that the mouse will move alongside it. 